on April 25th, 1988, Marsha Mudferber disappeared without a trace in Morgantown, West Virginia. She spent the day with someone, um, actually someone who was a prisoner at the Kennedy Center. They went to Pittsburgh that day to do some errands and he claims he dropped her off um, and nobody has seen her since. Her coat was left on, on her chair. A lot of her stuff was left there. And the car was parked at a meter across the street from the bar. She said she was going out for the afternoon. She'd be back. And that was it. That was it. You know, throughout this podcast, we've been given tips. Um, I think people are more comfortable talking now. It's 34 years later. One is intentional disappearance, which people, we've gotten Badlands, we've gotten Jamaica, we've gotten all kinds of sort of intentional journeys, you know, of, of her own devising, and that she was preparing to disappear. There are people who would say she told me she was going to be gone. She told me she was going to leave. Someday she just won't be there. And um, one day she wasn't. Murdered by motorcycle gangs, uh, the pag murdered by the pagans, murdered by the, what's the other motorcycle gang? Magnificent Souls. Witness protection is another big theory. Some people say there were some big cases that came down after she disappeared. Drug overdose. So that perhaps she was with somebody and she just OD'd and they got rid of the body, buried in a mine shaft somewhere. And over the course of the podcast, I'd say we have believed every single one of these theories. They're all plausible in their own way. And the peep and anyone who brings them up in, in a serious way has good reason to believe each one. And that's where it comes back to the that kind of house with the rooms that you might have been part of one of those rooms that led you to believe that somehow the pagans were responsible for this disappearance. Or you might have been in a room where she told you that she was leaving. leaving. Or you might have been in a room where you just knew she was a big time dealer, so witness protection would make sense. I'd like to think that she's out there still, still, running around the globe and, and, and being Marsha, you know, planting her seeds other places. I'd love to think that. Uh, you know, I've, I've heard stories that, that, that are a little more somber. Uh, I've, uh, you know, from people that were close to her. I've, I've, heard, st I've we've heard stories of people that, that would have known her when they, when, back in the 80s, feeling like they saw her. And I, I, when I went up to New York, I could have I swore, saw her. That I, I, I looked at her eye, you know, in the eyes. I could have swore it was Marsha. And, and I was startled. And, and, and before I turned back or around, she, she was gone. And I've, you know, as, as I was telling Karen and Jamie, I've, you know, there's somebody who said I, I, they, there was a sighting in Jerusalem. So I'd love to think that those are true. Being in a place where you've heard all these different stories, it's, it's really, it's, it's a question mark. I, I have no idea. My initial thoughts were that something terrible had happened to her, that she had gotten in over her head with drugs and was probably dead, like a drug deal gone bad, because while well, one theory is that she left, maybe because she got in over her head and, and she left. But I never believed that she could just leave and not call someone, her sons, me, some of her other friends. We used to joke that Marcia couldn't pass a phone booth without calling someone. She was a communicator. She was someone who was um, ferociously uh, connected to people. She always called herself a nomad, and I was kind of done, or you know, and and she wanted to be done too. She, that's what, you know, she wanted to move on, do something else. So when she disappeared, I just figured, you know, she was a friend of uh, Abby Hoffman, and you know, he disappeared for years, and I so, said, ah, she got some tips from him and figured out how to get out of town. You know, after ten years, then I kind of gave up on that theory. I thought she would reappear at some point. So if she were to suddenly appear, I would be torn between shaking her 
like, what the hell, woman? How could you have put us through all of this? Like, really? I mean, you tore us up to just wanting to hug her and be so, ha it's like, oh my God, I love you so much. I'm so glad you're alive. But man, I'm also really pissed at you. We hope that if people know something that they will call in tips to the Morgantown Police Department to Detective PJ Scott, who is still on the case. It's still an open case. Maybe somebody knows something. It's been 34 years, but you know, somebody knows what happened. We and believe someone knows what happened. We are convinced that there are people there who are still not being fully uh, transparent about what they know. The people who know what happened to her, who we think know, I would hope that they would understand that it's not too late to come forward with what they know, that there are a lot of us who have lived with great, oh, heartache and distress for 34, almost 35 years now, and to bring some peace and some closure to the story would just... Ah, oh, it would just mean so much.